good news, I'm on Santa's list. <laughs> That's good luck. Good morning! It is now day six of my trip, which means it's my final day, which is so, so sad. But the great news is I actually don't have to be picked up until 5 p.m. So I will still have most of the day here in Disneyland Park. There are some rides that I have to go on again before I go. Indiana Jones has reopened. It was down for refurbishment. So I've already booked a lightning lane for that. They're going very quickly. I'm very excited to do that. And uh, try and survive it again. <laughs> So I'm gonna try and get on some of the rides now whilst it's quiet and the queue times are short and then start utilizing Genie Plus to do all of the things, but um, I cannot wait. It is another beautiful day here in California. The sky is blue, the castle is pretty. So let's go and explore. So my strategy is the rides that tend to get very long queue times to do now and combine that with the rides that also sell out with the lightning lane very quickly. Because I've just booked Indiana Jones, I'll have to wait two hours to book another lightning lane. So something like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway or Haunted Mansion will go very quickly. The times will go very quickly for their lightning lanes. So I'm going to head over now to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. There's also a little coaster for kids that I want to do <laughs> in Toontown. I wouldn't mind going on Roger Rabbit's, um, the, that weird, whatever that was, the spin ride. It was mental, I was not expecting it, but I loved it, so I'd like to do that again. So let's head to Toontown and try and get all of those three things done. So I found the best strategy with Genie Plus is the first couple of hours in the parks, when the queue rides are very short, to do as many rides in that time as possible. And I tend to pick a specific land. So I go to Fantasyland or Toontown, like I'm gonna to do today, and do all of those rides. And then once the queue times start to pick up in the day, start booking Genie Plus then. The only exception I would say is for rides like Indiana Jones, where like the the times could go very quickly so I, I got into the park about half eight the park opened at eight the first time I could get was 12 30 so if I waited a, an hour or two because I'm leaving today the times might have been too late to book that so I have already booked that in but stuff like Big Thunder Mountain and rides like that there Genie Plus reservations tend to be quite close to the time when you're actually booking them. So you might have to wait 30 minutes or maybe an hour, but they're very, very close. So those ones I will book later in the day because they'll be much easier to get. I really love Toontown. It's like really wacky and bright and fun. It is heavily populated with families because there are lots of play areas here. So it's a good place if the kids want to go run around and burn off some energy but of course you also have some fun rides here so it's definitely worth coming and it's actually behind it's a small world so on my first day i could not find two town at all <laughs> but i've managed to find it now there is a pathway next to it's a small world and you enter into two town <laughs> standby queue before and it is so cute it's like Mickey throughout the years and all the props and I love the posters that have been changed to the animated characters for like Hocus Pocus and stuff it's so cute <laughs>
it's so cool being in a cartoon and I think the trackless rides are so fun. We had a little kind of moment we had to stop and it was cool to see Mickey and Minnie at the end like once they do their big song if you're stuck there they do a little like they, they kind of improvise they just do their own little jam <laughs> that was really cute so next i'm going to go on chip and dale's gadget coaster i haven't been on this yet it's like a kids coaster but you know i've never been on this ride before you haven't got it in any of the parks so absolutely necessary to go on it now <laughs> because a lot of the ride goes over the queue so they don't want anything in your hand you have to take your ears off things like that it was so fun it goes a lot faster than you think although that being said it's only about 20 seconds <laughs> it is a very quick coaster this ride does get very very long i've seen it at 50 minutes in the daytime which i wouldn't say it's worth it for how short the ride is but it is super fun and i love that this gadget she doesn't get enough representation but to see her in this ride is amazing so i thought i would give you a quick look at genie plus so you can see in the mornings which ride get the longest queue so if you're coming to Disneyland you know which rides to head to first or maybe get Genie Plus for. So as we can see Alice is a 20 minute wait that's quite a popular one Big Thunder of course is popular lots of other rides just five minutes which is fantastic Dumbo gets very popular in the day so 15 minutes is good Haunted Mansion of course is popular all the time so that's a good one to go to immediately or get Genie Plus for. Indiana Jones, the Genie Plus goes very quickly so that is a top one to get. A lot of the rest of these rides, very short queue times, so perfect in the morning. Peter Pan, always popular no matter what park you go in. Doesn't have lightning lanes, so be aware of that. I was going to go on Roger Rabbit, but he's currently shot. And of course, Rise of the Resistance, always super, super popular. For me, Rise of the Resistance is the one ride where I think the individual lightning lane is worth it. It is $26, which is about £22, but it's about a 25 minute experience. So it's rather than just you're on a ride for a minute or two, the whole queue is part of the ride. So it is incredible. And when I used it the other day, it was a 60 minute standby and I literally walked straight on. So I thought it was well worth it. So sadly, Roger Rabbit is shut for the moment. So what I think I'm going to do is head back into the main part of the park. I'm right next to it. It's a small world. It has a five minute wait. So I'll probably go on that next because this holiday version is literally incredible. And I just thought the outside was lit up for Christmas. I had no idea the whole inside has an overlay as well. And it's incredible. I think what's great is both of the rides here that have the overlay, which are It's a Small World and Haunted Mansion. The overlays really enhance the ride. They don't take away from them, which is wonderful. So if you're worried about visiting when there's an overlay. So if you are worried about visiting when there's an overlay, absolutely don't. They have been wonderful and I've really enjoyed both of them. The other thing to note is that with Genie Plus, you can only go on each ride once. So if the queues are very short, it's better to just wait in the standby queue and then use your Genie Plus later and you can go on the ride again. So for example, at the moment, Indiana Jones is only 30 minutes. Super popular ride. Later on, that'll get much, much higher. So I would, you could queue now, get on it, and then use your Genie Plus later in the day to get to ride it twice in a day.
this version of It's a Small World has so many Disney characters in it, so every time I go on it, it's trying to spot more and more, which is fantastic. And that overlay is just so special. It feels so festive. The lights are so beautiful. There's a bit where there's amazing scent of gingerbread. And then I love that they've mixed the It's a Small World song with Christmas songs. It's just perfection. different tracks and I've always been on the other track and they asked me today would you like to go to the other side so I'm very excited to try this side too it's like That was the left-hand side track, but I absolutely love that ride, and it was great to have finally done both tracks. So pretty! This morning there are so many characters out and about wandering around, and it's fantastic. I actually think this is the best way of seeing characters like i say standing in a queue for an hour is no fun and no one enjoys it but just seeing them wander around and you might not be able to get like a photo or stuff like that but you can photograph them as they're going past or have a little wave a high five something like that and i think it's brilliant so i'm now gonna grab some breakfast and here they have a little harvest breakfast bowl that is vegan so i'm very excited to try it with quinoa, arugula, or rocket, you get potato barrels, you get a spicy lime aioli. It's a really great sized portion, so I'm very much, this aioli as well smells incredible. I'm very excited to try it. You also get cauliflower and mushrooms, so a really great hearty breakfast, and again, it's kind of like whole foods, apart from like potato barrels. <laughs> but uh, let's see what it's like. That has great flavour. That aioli is really, really good. And what I like is that they don't just do like the most basic thing when it comes to vegan food. Like this is a really interesting dish. And I think that's really nice because they could just be like, oh, just give them anything that's vegan, like a fruit bowl or something, which is a fine breakfast, which is not very exciting. So I love that here, the vegans are really well catered for. You're not just like an afterthought. They really put a lot of effort and energy into making amazing food for you. So I have to say, this is my favorite breakfast I've had since I've been here. It's literally amazing. The food was so tasty. And what I think is really great about Disneyland here 
here is that it's very much a foodie destination. Instead of just getting like typical theme park fare and it not being very great quality, here the dishes are so creative, they're so interesting, and they all taste incredible. So I have really loved the food here. And um, I hope that one day <laughs> Disneyland Paris will aspire to be more like the US parks because the US parks really do put so much effort and thought into their dishes. And like I said, they're not like, oh, let's just have typical theme park fare, like pizzas or burgers. And even when you have those dishes, they're really great versions of it. So the food in Disneyland has been next level. And this breakfast harvest bowl was incredible. <laughs> Something that always really impresses me whenever I come to the US is just how friendly and welcoming American people are. During this trip, it has been a solo trip, but I've spoken to so many people and had the most amazing interactions. And you'll go home with memories of these really, really nice chats you've had with strangers. And the people are just so friendly. They will come up and talk to you. You'll have lovely little chats. Like it won't just be like a little one comment and you go away. Like have a little talk. It's so, so nice. And it's really enhanced by experience experience here so wow. I'm always blown away whenever I come to the US just how wonderfully lovely and friendly and welcoming Americans are how totally charming to be in Fantasyland by the carousel and you have Mary Poppins and her pearly band it's just wonderful on the carousel and Mr Toad had gone down and as they finished on their ride Mr Toad reopened so I'm walking straight on what a fabulous moment in Disney time <laughs> it's amazing the sailing ship Columbia is so impressive so it's really nice to have a little sail around rivers of America and also get a fantastic view of this part of the park. Oh. 
In the three years it took us to make that journey, Colombia was more than just a ship to us. You can kind of get a sense of how busy today is by seeing the queue times and the queues outside the rides. So Genie Plus is coming in super handy because I've got some reservations for the big, big rides so I'll be able to do them again before I leave. Oh. One thing I really love about Disney is waving. <laughs> Because it's one of these places that if you're on a ride or something, you wave people, they wave back. But ahead, nowhere else in life is that normal. Of <laughs> Those of you around the cannon best be stepping back. Way back. For the cannon, she be a mite loud. And the gunner's aim be a mite poor. Big credit to fire one. Fire one! Now that should put some fear in them. There was a moment where a f cannon was meant to fire and it didn't work, so they tried to change the, the ammunition, didn't work, so the man just went, boo, which I thought was a great improvisation. When we travel this far upriver, our ship often draws the attention of the local tribes. Look, look there, the chief has given us a sign of peace, which means we will be granted safe passage. This is a really lovely, peaceful little journey, so I'm loving doing this. And actually, you can actually go downstairs in the ship and see like the living quarters, what it was like to be on a ship like this, which is pretty cool. is go to the tiki room so let's head there now such a cute classic disney attraction so let's have a little look at the scene birds oh look at all the people and welcome to walt disney's enchanted tiki room we better start the show rolling wait wait we forgot to wake up the glee club <laughs> oh no oh no it's show time and now seniors and senoritas please place your So the tiki room was charming as always. I really love those kind of classic attractions and particularly when you know that Walt Disney was so involved with it and he'd gone to Europe and seen a little animatronic bird and it sparked his imagination and then of course they made it bigger and better and loads of animatronics and what I really like is the more you get into the show the more the room comes alive which is so so cool I am currently sat here right next to the castle in the sun it is glorious I'm not feeling 100% well so I have cancelled my Indiana Jones because I don't think I should risk that <laughs> being thrashed around and also it does mean I'll obviously have to come back at some point won't I because uh, I've got to go on it again so <laughs> maybe that's a way to think about it so I am just sitting here I think there's going to be a show in the Royal Theatre which is behind me quite soon which you wouldn't mind seeing and I've swapped my Indiana Jones for a Haunted Mansion uh, GD Plus so we'll be able to do that before we leave so yeah it's great but it's just so nice sitting here in the sun people watching this lovely music playing it's just so glorious to be here in the hub Who did you want to do? I don't know. 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 I don
步一直打包来。一、二，大罗。so much I went and did it again and now it is time for my haunted mansion lightning lane so this will be my last time I'll get to go on it this trip so let's go see Jack and Co one more time <laughs> you actually have to row and then you go over to the island where there is the pirate's lair so I might try that out. I've actually found a cheat's way there's a little raft that's motorised that will take you there so I'm going to go over on that. One more day, and there are some benches where you can just sit and it's so peaceful here it's so calm because in the parks obviously it's quite busy but you come over here and it's like so quiet there's no one really around you can still see the rest of the park but you're just having a little oasis moment over here which is fantastic all hands on deck stand by to go ashore yard man aloft into the foot ropes
it is a cute little island to go and explore and it also has a wobbly rope bridge so let's go on that wobbly rope bridge <laughs> I always love these. I love that they've got one at Disneyland Paris and it's great they've got one here. Being on this island was super nice and relaxing. It's actually a really great place to come. If you want a little break in the day, some downtime that's not so hectic, this is fantastic. And look how much fun we're having. Yeah. Look how much fun I'm having. Big bicep. Look at them, look at me. Good job. Good job. are very very long but one of the shortest ones is pirates now this is probably going to end up being my final ride of the trip but that is quite amazing because whenever i go to disneyland paris it's always the first and final ride that i do so to end on this ride is pretty cool it's an amazing version of pirates so let's see if it actually does take 25 minutes because sometimes disney do overestimate so you feel happy when you don't queue that long so the wait for pirates was around 25 minutes but the great thing is this queue moves so quickly so it hasn't felt that long at all so that's good news they've also got another scene man with cats which was excellent and um, it's kind of amazing that that was my final ride because as i say in disneyland paris it's become a tradition it's so good that's definitely my favorite version of paris we've been on and the scale of it is so much bigger than any of the other pirate rides it's amazing so i think i'm gonna grab a little drink and start heading towards the front of the park oh, i'm still looking for this sweatshirt that i was looking for last night um, and I might try and catch the parade. I'll watch it towards the end of Main Street, so if I need to leave, I can. But um, it's around the same time as I'm leaving, so I might see if I can catch a little tiny little glimpse of Christmas just before I leave. It is a bit of a 
shame that where I felt a bit unwell today, I haven't done some of the rides I wanted to do again, like Rise of the Resistance or Indiana Jones, but it also gave me the opportunity to do things I hadn't done yet, such as going on sailing ship Columbia, going to the Pirates Lair Island. So it was good to see more parts of the park, and I'd already done those rides, so it's really good. It's not like I've missed out on them. And of course, that then means you have to come back, right? You have to go on them again, so I'll just have to have another trip at some point in the future. So I just popped into a shop to try and find this sweatshirt that I'm desperate for. They don't have it, but they do have a monorail bag. How amazing. <laughs> So I've popped back into the Christmas shop to get my ornament. I always like to get one from the parks and it to be specific to that park. So I've got a little one that has like all the iconic attractions here, which I think is so cute. awful part of the trip where you have to say goodbye and I have to say this trip has been so magical this I really do think is the most magical of all the Disney parks I've ever been to Disneyland itself is next level I've been absolutely obsessed I am absolutely in love I cannot be leaving it so long to the next time that I come back just everything here is that extra bit of special. I love how you see the characters wandering around, you have all of the rides that are unique to here, and there's just so much history. The train's arriving, what perfect timing. And it's just unbelievable, honestly. I cannot explain in words how amazing it is. It is just truly so special and magical here. So it's very sad to leave. And I think it makes up upset because you don't know when you will be back. But, you know, there are some things I didn't get to do, so I will absolutely have to come back. But I would say, if you are ever thinking of coming here, absolutely do it. I think a lot of people from the UK and Europe think perhaps it's very, very far. Maybe it would cost too much. I actually think once you're here, the cost is cheaper than Disney World. So if you can get good deals like I did for the flights and hotel, this can be a really great option if you do want to come to a US Disney Park and I would say definitely put it on your bucket list because it is so special. So now oh, I'm going to head back to the hotel and get my things and go to the airport. I am going to show you the return journey just so you can kind of see what that is like. But if you don't want to see that then I will say farewell to you now. Thank you so much for watching this series. I'm going to be doing lots of planning videos all about Disneyland soon. And of course I have more Disney trips coming up. So do make sure you check them out. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you never miss out. And if you are leaving here then I will wish you a most magical day. But if you're going to follow me home, let's get going. I don't like saying that, it's not fair is it? We're not leaving, I want to stay forever. So I am now back at the Anaheim Hotel. I've collected my luggage. I have to say I've really enjoyed staying here. It is so close to the park. It's literally one block over, a five minute walk. The staff have been next level incredible. Everyone's been so friendly, particularly Mike, who was out the front of the hotel every morning. We'd have a chat. He was so welcoming and friendly, and he really, really made my stay here amazing. The room was really comfortable, and I didn't hear any noise when I was in the room. Like, you couldn't hear anyone else around. You'd sometimes hear doors outside shut, but that's it. You wouldn't hear anyone in their room. You'd not know there was anyone around, which was fantastic couldn't fault this I would absolutely stay here again I loved the theming it is so cute it's really modern and fresh 
So yeah, if you're looking for somewhere to stay, the Anaheim Hotel is fantastic and a five minute walk away from Disney. And you can actually see Guardians of the Galaxy from the front of the hotel and you can see the fireworks from the swimming pool. So originally I had hired a car to drive back to LAX myself just to see what that was like. But the ride down here was so comfortable that I thought, you know what, to save the stress of, you know, does it have a sat nav? Am I gonna have to use Waze on my phone? Can I even do that? And all of the hassle of driving on the side of the road, etc. I thought I'll just book Diamond Driver Guy again. It was a really fantastic service coming here and they're actually picking me up at five o'clock. I'd arranged to pick the higher couple higher car up at three i was like i've heard a lot of bad things about la traffic but the great news is obviously these people this is their job they're professional drivers so they know how long that they need to give you for the la traffic so i thought i'll take the stress out of it and use them again so just waiting to be picked up now so i am now here with adrian how you doing diamond driver guy so <laughs> i've had two fantastic rides i had nikki first time amazing and i've had adrian and it's just taken so much stress out of getting to it from the airport as i said i was gonna hire a car but you know that's a lot to be doing on your own in a, in a city you don't know best ride we had drinks there's snacks Thanks. great music great Thanks. chat it was the best Chat ever. It's fun. Nicest woman I've ever <laughs> so, sweet. so nice. So yeah, if you're coming, you need to get Diamond Driver Guy. This is the one. So I am now at the airport. I got dropped off right in front of where I needed to be. There was no queue to drop my bags. I had a really great agent. We had a great, great chat. He also does YouTube videos. So it was so nice. We were like, oh, what camera have you got? <laughs> we a little chat. And then security was also very quick. No queue. I'm always impressed. Whenever I go to any other airport outside of London they're so much more efficient obviously LAX is one of the busiest airports in the world but it's been seamless it's amazing so let's go around and have a little look around and see what's here so I was dropped off at Terminal 2 which was where Virgin Atlantic's bag drop and check-in is and now I've come over to Terminal B which is the international airport for my gate and I found where all the shops are so let's give you a little glimpse of LAX all the designer brands that I don't wear so I'm gonna skip past them but I would like a little drinky so I will find a little convenience store so I'm now at the gate I think um <laughs> I checked in at terminal 2 and now I'm in terminal B I think this gate it's not like the terminals have the same numbers so I'm in gate 157 so I think that I'm in the right place <laughs> But I got here very, very early. It took me 50 minutes in the taxi. I was expecting, because it's Friday, gosh, out of two hours. So that was very, very lucky. I haven't seen loads of shops in the terminal. But I did get a drink. I paid $7 for water. You had to either have a glass um, container or aluminium container. So I suppose I'll be reusing that. Um, I am very tired. I'm very excited to get on the plane, uh, but still waiting to see if I'm at the right gate. They've put our flight details up, so I'm definitely in the right place. Downside, it is freezing in here. I've now got four layers on, including two jumpers, and I'm still cold. So I'm looking forward to getting on the plane before we can have to take all the layers off. So they're just starting to board the plane now. We've had quite a significant delay, um, but I am so tired. I kept like nodding off in the seat. So I'm hoping I'll be able to sleep on the plane. We were supposed to board at 8.20 and take off at 9.20 and it's now 10 o'clock and we're just boarding. So. suddenly so I wanted to do a little outro the trip was absolutely incredible it was like a dream I don't know if it came across but I'm uh, properly obsessed with Disneyland now <laughs> it was literally amazing I love that there was so much history there was so much packed into Disneyland Park loads of unique rides the roaming characters were next level I also thought like the food was really reasonable and 
delicious unbelievably good so all in all it was amazing absolutely loved the anaheim hotel diamond driver guy were incredible such good experience with them i loved it so if you are ever thinking of going to disneyland absolutely do it it is so so worth it it was the most incredible trip i am dying to go back i really really liked having genie plus there it was amazing that you could actually add it on to the length of your stay and the fact that you got photo pass included was brilliant and it really really helped cut down the queue times massively so i very much enjoyed that i loved doing everything festive like there is nowhere more christmasy than disney so i was so glad i got to experience that in california even though it was strange because you know it was wonderful weather <laughs> it was beautiful it was glorious but it was so so amazing the dessert party was fantastic i would definitely be doing more dessert parties in the future i also absolutely loved getting to meet up with connie and dawn it was such a special afternoon Afternoon. we had so much fun together getting to see the christmas parade was excellent including santa which was amazing and then going to the grand californian what an amazing hotel it was literally perfection inside where you had the people singing the carols and you had the gingerbread house and the tree like it could not have been more festive so overall it was the most incredible trip i do have to say the flight coming home wasn't as good as the flight going out it was a different plane so the seats weren't as comfortable to sit on um so after a few hours you're like oh god definitely feeling it and it was also a case of the food wasn't particularly great um they were serving food very late so our flight was delayed so they served the first meal about half 11 at night and by that point i'd already fallen asleep so they kind of woke me up and i was like i don't want the meal i was asleep <laughs> the breakfast i got kind of came in a little like a cardboard box but something had been spilt on it and it was all sticky and you just couldn't touch it like it was grim so it didn't have any of that so the flight coming home was not as good but i did manage to get some sleep which was amazing the good thing is the jet lag was not an issue which was fantastic i managed to slip back into uk time very easily and i also felt like i slipped into californian time quite easily i don't know if it's because it's such a big time difference with it being eight hours but i was so impressed and going back to the hotel in the afternoons having that little break definitely helped so that's something i've been doing in all my disney trips and it was perfect for california because i did not really apart from that first day feel like super jet lagged at all which was incredible but what an amazing trip it was literally a dream so i want to say a big thank you to everyone who has watched it's been so wonderful seeing all of your comments and i've been doing the live watch alongs when they premiere and talking to everyone it's been amazing so thank you once again for watching i will be having a disneyland paris vlog series starting very soon which i cannot wait for at the time of recording it is about a week before i go to disneyland paris so i cannot wait and there's lots of new things that have arrived since my last trip so i can't wait to experience them and later this year i will be doing a solo trip to disney world so in the autumn that series will be coming out and in between i will be having lots of planning videos all about disneyland i'm going to be adding that into the roster and disneyland paris and disney world so if you are planning a trip make sure you check them out and also come check out my website on there i've got lots of planning templates to help you plan your own trips to disneyland paris disney world or disneyland so i hope you've enjoyed seeing my solo trip to disneyland during the festive season i am still on a high from it it was amazing and i hope to catch you very very soon with some of my other videos but until next time i hope you have a most magical day Bye bye